Well, time to move on then. Glenmark Pharma, well, it reported uh, a decent set of numbers in the first quarter. Revenue growth was better than expectations. Margins were more or less in line. Mr. V.S. Money, the executive uh, director and global chief financial officer at Glenmark Pharma, joins us on the show. Uh, hi, Mr. Money. Good morning, and thanks so much for speaking Good to us. Good morning, too. Let's uh, focus on the way ahead first. You know, you laid out a guidance for FY24, so is that on track? Revenue growth, yeah. will it be better than the 10 to 11% since the first quarter you have started off, you know, quite well? Margins you were guiding for 19 to around 20%. Do you hold on to that? And also, what about your debt reduction plans? What will your debt look like at the end of this year? Sure. Thank you very much. Uh, and good morning to everybody. So, uh, first and foremost, uh, I would like to give a bit of uh, color on the overall performance. So, we had a uh, quarterly revenue across all geographies at about 3,400 crores, which is effectively about 22.5% growth. And as well as the EBITDA margins were closer to 19%. So you are right in terms of our guidance, we had guided the street to about a 10 to 11 percent uh, growth in revenues as well as uh, about a 19 to 20 percent uh, EBITDA margin. So we would currently like to hold on to these uh, guidances and uh, we'll see as the year goes by if we need to do any change to the guidance. Okay. So overall, good quarter. I mean, uh, the forward, uh, I mean, the businesses going forward also seem decently good. We have a number of good launches coming up. So I think all in all, all right. uh, looks okay. As what far as the, the debt, debt goes, we had, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll respond to that. As far as the debt goes, uh, we had a uh, we have a gross debt currently of about four thousand four hundred odd crores and net debt of about two thousand nine hundred odd. With this improvement in the overall uh, quality of business as well as the improvement in the margins, and also keeping our capex in you know in, in, in good, managing it well in terms of six hundred to seven hundred crores. As well as keeping our R&D expenditure between eight to eight and a half percent, I think we are we are hoping to have some decent uh, cash generation and as we go along to bring down the debt as well. So, any targets that you would have this gross debt at forty four hundred crores? How much do you think you can bring it down to by the end of the year? So, we had given a guidance that in an, in a, you know during our last uh, investor conference that by twenty six we should be net debt uh, uh, you know. Positive, I mean, uh, negative uh, sort of uh, uh, overall. Then free uh, by you know, the debt being uh, negative. I mean, not uh, there will be no uh, debt as such in the books. So I think we are right. along close for that. Okay, so you're saying that uh, the company is uh, had guided to become net debt free by FY26, and you're on track to do that. Got it? Yes. Uh, you know, Mr. Money. Mr. Money, the big uh, issue in the last couple of years was pricing pressure in the US, right? The last time when we spoke with you, you said that there are signs of the pricing pressure stabilizing. But just wanted to understand, how is the US market doing now, A, in terms of pricing, and B, in terms of growth as well? What do you think uh, a sustainable growth could be? Because this quarter was very strong, the America business. Sure. So I think uh, our overall revenues, we are seeing uh, about 100 million in terms of the US, million dollars per quarter. So I think that's good traction and we see a single digit growth in the US in this current year, about a mid single digit growth. And as far as uh, the pricing pressure goes, it is still at about 6 to 8%. But uh, I think we have a couple of good launches. So with the launches and the growth in the volumes, we should be able to take care of that. So you're saying the price erosion is 6 to 8%? To the, yeah, 6 to 8% would be the uh, uh, sort of pricing pressures in the US. Okay. And this single digit growth that you're looking at, $100 million per quarter, in the U.S. business is the run rate that you're expecting. Uh, how much do the regulatory issues impact the business this time around? I mean, uh, a, a, any timeline in terms of when we can expect either remediation process to get completed by the U.S. And once that happens, could, do you think this run rate could improve? Yeah, so uh, absolutely, because obviously the U.S. Uh, facility has got uh, injectables. Okay, so that's uh, something that is very much required in the U.S. So I think uh, most of our remediation measures that we were planned in the U.S. are all done. So I think we shouldn't see my minimal uh, uh, remediation costs in the U.S. But uh, uh, obviously, uh, if this uh, comes out well in the coming year, we're able to start on the exhibit and the engineering batches in the Q3 of this year. We should see the overall. Uh, I think it will. Uh, the U.S. business will add to our. I mean, the Mariam facility will add to our growth in the coming years. May not be in the current year, but in the coming years, it should definitely add to our growth. Okay, so all in all, I think uh, uh, if these uh, all the measures that you have taken on the remediation work out well, we should see a good growth in the US in the years to come by. Mm. Right. Uh, 
<clears throat> Mr. Mani, uh, just uh, just to kind of uh, complete the loop earlier on about the guidance, etc. So you said uh, t the revenue growth is uh, 10 to 10 to 11 percent. That is what you said. That's right. Uh, margins, margins between 19 and uh, 20 percent, yes. uh, and and 100 100 million dollars quarterly run rate from US, which you've maintained, and you said pricing pressure in the US is now uh, is is fallen to six to eight percent per year. Yes, yes, absolutely. And and this is uh, this is much better, right? I mean, things have come come a lot, uh, come off uh, quite a bit. The pressure yeah, has come off I've, quite a bit. Yeah, as you see, there was a lot of pain over the last three or four years in terms of. Sometimes even uh, you know double digit. Uh, yeah, you know, no, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying it's gotten better. It's gotten better. It's gotten better. Sorry, yeah. It's gotten better. All right, fair enough. I got that. Now, uh, could you give us some guidance, uh, Mr. Money, on the respiratory uh, portfolio, which includes uh, key drugs like uh, Rialtris? Uh, you had guided for forty to forty-five million dollars of sales from the drug, uh, and could you tell us? I mean, are you uh, running ahead of this particular number already in terms of a run rate? Yes. So respiratory, I mean, if you look at it uh, across geographies, we have done well. And uh, Rialtri specifically, you know, we are guided to a 40 to 45 million. In the first quarter itself, we are at about 10 to 15 million. So we see very good growth in this, uh, in Rialtri. And as you know that we have launched it across all the, most of the geographies, US, Europe. And in Europe, we also have good partners like Menareni. And uh, apart from that, in some of the other markets like Russia, South Africa, uh, and also some of our partners in Australia as well as South Korea are doing well. So all in all, respiratory as a portfolio is doing well. Uh, and uh, even in India, if you can see that over the years, we've got, we have been sort of second in the respiratory segment. So we've come a long way. And across all geographies, our respiratory products are doing well, be it Europe, be it some of the emerging markets. So I think uh, overall, uh, it's doing well. Okay, all right. Uh, Mr. Mani, so you've given us a fair uh, estimate about how you see operational performance going ahead. But uh, let's talk about the other company, and that's Glenmark Life, which is listed. Now, Glenmark holds close around 83% stake in Glenmark Life. So either you'll go ahead, you'll bring the stake down by 7 to 8%. I think you'll got more than a year uh, to do that. That's by August 2024. Or the other point is that, you know, reports are indicating that uh, Glenmark could be looking at selling Glenmark Life to Nirma. Can, can you clarify on that? No, I mean, I would like to just say as of now, you know, basically our, we would like to bring down the minimum public shareholding down to 75%, that's 7 to 8%. And there's nothing more to report on that. On the block? Glenmark Life is not on the block? No, we, 7 to 8% is what we are looking at uh, divesting as of well. Okay, all right. Okay, so 7 to 8% is what you're looking to divest at the moment. And... Uh, it I'm sure a lot of these funds, I mean, of course, you've also spoken about in the past that the funds that you would be raising would be used to deleverage the balance sheet. Uh, can you tell us what, can you tell us what is the, you know, plan? How much could be used to deleverage the balance sheet? And uh, by the end of it, I mean, of course, you gave us your net debt numbers, but uh, what's the plan in terms of, you know, this divestment and how much would be used there? So actually, this, we have a time frame up till uh, August of 24 to do this. So we're hoping to complete it before that. So whatever comes will all be used to divest, I mean, to reduce our debt. Yeah. Mm, okay. Uh, I wondered, you know, you told us about how the U.S. business will be, uh, will see single-digit growth. I wanted to know a little bit about the India business. You're barely doing a 3% growth year on year. I think because of that price revision, the NLEM price revision, so I understand that. And there's also a slowdown in the acute segment as we discussed earlier. But can you tell us uh, this single-digit growth is something in, in, in the India business that can continue for how long? Will it continue to be low single-digit growth for FY24? And when do you see recovery come through? So I, uh, I would like to, first of all, say that if you take into account some of the divestment of non-core brands that we did uh, last year, and apart from the NLEM uh, impact that we had, if you have to take all this into account, it would be like a 8% growth in the current quarter. I mean, even if you look at uh, basically IQ via MAT, you know, June of 23, again, we grew at about 13%, okay, vis-a-vis -vis, uh, growing at about, I mean, the industry growing at about 10%. So I think I agree with you that uh, due to the slowdown on the acute segments, uh, we are we would guide to a single digit growth for the current year. But overall, the quality of the business and the growth over the years have been very good, and we continue to grow ahead of the industry. So I think uh, wouldn't uh, look too much into the current quarter because, as I explained, that if you were to uh, take out the effect of the 
divestment of non core brands as well as uh, the anilium impact we would be at about 8% so i think over a period of time right. sort of level of mr money just a very quick question before we let you go the point on glenmark life the 7 to 8% are you likely to do it in the coming quarter and also will it be an ofs or will you do a, a you know a, a preferential allotment uh, to a couple of parties so we will uh, take it as it comes but it will definitely not happen in the coming quarter it could be a little longer than that as we have time till august okay so we will take our time to okay. plan that okay. and the, and the right, business uh... is also doing Okay, all right, Mr. Mani. The shareholders like it as well. I mean, the last six months, the stock is up seventy percent. So, all the best for the future. Thanks a lot for joining in and speaking to CNBC TV eighteen. Let's uh, thank you.